Hello class. When we look at this molecule shown right here, how many signals would you predict? Now we could use the, uh, well there's on carbon one there's one hydrogen and then the, on carbon two there's two hydrogens. So the question is, is these, are these two hydrogens equivalent or not? And you can do the replacement test or you could see that there is going to be a plane of symmetry through this molecule, which means that these two hydrogens are an antiotopic, which means that they are going to be equivalent. So we would expect a signal for this proton and a second signal for these two protons. That's what we would expect. Now, when we take that molecule, and put it into the NMR, this is what we get. We get three signals right here, one, two, three, and then two right here. So we got five signals. So this is a little perplexing, like what's going on here? But the what's really happening is that there are in fact only two signals. This signal right here, you can see that we call this a triplet. That is actually one signal that has been split into three. Okay, so when we look at an NMR, that is still just one signal and that one signal is responsible for that one proton, but it gets split into a triplet. And then these two protons right here give one signal but that one signal is split into a doublet. And the rule that explains this is called the N plus one rule. And we're going to delve into why the N plus one rule works. And we're going to delve into the theory as to what is actually going on. Why do these signals get split? So that's our goal. So, the splitting pattern, okay? What's happening here, see my pen tool here, I'm going to draw the molecule all over again, okay? So we have two hydrogens there, and a chlorine. Okay, so I'm going to now with a little subscript, say, hey, this hydrogen is HB and those are HA. So I'm just distinguishing them. So the letters in the subscript say, hey, those are both A, so that means they're equivalent. And this is B, which means then this guy and that group are not equivalent. They're chemically distinct. Now what is happening is the signal, let's say if we're looking at the signal for HB, okay? So let's go back. What does HB look like? That guy right there. So we could put a little B there and an A and an A. What is, why does HB split into triplet? Well, it splits because these protons, HA, behave like a bar magnet. We've already discussed this before. That's how nuclei uh, behave, right? And so those HA protons are generating a local magnetic field, but their local magnetic field of HA affects the chemical shift of HB because of their close proximity to HB. And so they're interacting with one another. HB and HA interact. And when they interact, we call this a spin-spin coupling. So what we can say is HB is spin-spin coupling with HA. We, we typically in the field shorten that down to coupled. HB is coupled to HA. And because 
HB is coupled to HA, it interacts, and that is the cause of the splitting. HB is split into a triplet because of HA. So let's read, let's de erase this real quick and read what this bullet point here has to say. This is the important piece. So protons that are coupled are chemically distinct from each other and are generally separated by three or fewer bonds. So let's, what does that mean? Okay. So if we come here and draw the molecule on this right here, chlorine, and that was H, B, A, and A. In order for something to couple, it has to be within three bonds from one another, okay? So we already know HB is coupled by HA. Now, that has to be within three bonds. So one, two, three. So it's, with it, it's three bonds away. So that can couple, okay? So what if I extended this molecule out, converted this chlorine right here into a something like that. So now that's another group of protons and I'll call those HC. Now does HC right here couple with HB? Let's, so we have to look at the bonds. How many are there? One, two, three, Four. Nope. HC does not couple with HB. It's too far away. But does HA couple with HC? One, two, three. Yes. So HA would in fact couple with HC and HC would couple with HA. So that's very, very important to remember. Now, here's the N plus 1 rule, and it's verbalized or in text right there. But instead of just reading that right to you, let's just do an example, okay? So, if we had a molecule that looked like this, what would the splitting pattern be for HB? And the way I approach this is I identify the carbon that is attached to the proton of interest, which is HB. And then I ask myself, what are the adjacent carbons to this one? And it's that guy right there. And then I ask myself, how many hydrogens are on that circled carbon? And I see that there are zero hydrogens. So this N plus one rule states that you place in there, in for N, how many protons are on the adjacent carbons. So there are zero protons plus one equals one. And that one right there corresponds to <clears throat> that guy right there. And since you have a one, that proton right here, when we look at the NMR spectrum, is going to be what is called a singlet. Just one peak. One, one peak. All right. So the N plus one rule, we're just counting how many adjacent protons there are. So let's do another example. All right. What is the splitting pattern? for HB? Well, we find the carbon that's attached to, and then find the adjacent carbon and ask how many hydrogens are attached to that adjacent carbon. And we count them. And we see that there is one. So the splitting pattern for HB is going to be N plus one. N equals the amount of HA, which is there's only one. So one plus one equals two, 
which then is going to be that number corresponds to that number, which means HB is going to be split into a doublet. So if we look on an NMR spectrum, HB would look something like that as a doublet. Now, do you see what, what I'm going to do next? What about this guy? What is the splitting pattern for HB? It's attached to that carbon. What is adjacent? This one. How many hydrogens are there? There's two. So two plus one equals three. So that number three is that one, which means it is a triplet. So HB is going to split into a triplet, which looks like, well, that is a horrible triplet. Something like that. Now, I'm drawing these very, very broad because when you actually look at an NMR spectrum, you see how it looks, there's a triplet right there. Okay. And look at how I drew my triplet. So I could do better than that, right? But it's, it's a little difficult to draw those, okay? Okay, now what, it, what about the splitting pattern for HA? What's that going to split into? Well, we do the same process. We find these hydrogens of interest. What carbon is it attached to? That one. We have to look at the adjacent carbons. Are there any carbons on that one? No. Are there it? Sorry, did I say carbons? Are there any hydrogens attached to that carbon? No. Are there any hydrogens attached to that? Yes, there is. So what do we do? There's going to be one hydrogen there. One plus one equals two. So that means a doublet. So the HAs are going to be split into a doublet because HA is being coupled to HB. And that's what we see back here. HA is split into a doublet. All right. Now let's look at this next example here. H -A -H -B is going to be coupled to those three. So three plus one equals four. The four is that, which means we have a quartet. And a quartet simply looks with four uh, peaks right there. Okay. And so you need to... Uh, Remember and know these names right here, right? And their symbols. So a little s represents singlet and t for triplet and so forth. Now this little slide right here um, doesn't have all the names, so I'm going to add those to it, okay? So let's scratch that out for a moment. So if you have an n plus one of six, that's going to be called a sextet. And if you have seven, it's going to be a septet. And even if you go to eight, that would be a octet. Okay. And those that's as far as you need to go with memorizing those terms. Now, there will be uh, NMR spectra that are very, very complicated, and it's very hard to determine the splitting pattern. And when that happens, we just use this little lowercase m, which stands for a multiplet. And a multiplet means it's just a lot of signals. Okay? And that's going to deal with when we have what's called a complex splitting pattern. Right now, these are simple splitting patterns. So the complex splitting patterns will come later. So that's when you will start using the multiplet in complex splitting patterns. But these right now are the simple ones. Right. So we could also 
do the analysis. What does HA split as? Well, HA is split by HB. So there's one HB. So one plus one equals two. So that means a doublet. So HA, these three right there are going to be split as a doublet. All right, now the origin, now we are going to look into the n plus one rule and understand why does it work? What's actually happening? We're going to take a look at the molecule and understand why does HB get split into a doublet? And it's cup, spin, spin coupling with HA. So <clears throat> HA can have two states. It can have be in the alpha state and in the beta state. Now, if it's in the alpha state, if HA is in the alpha state, we have the spin aligned with the external magnetic field in the same direction. Okay? So that proton or that version of HA is going to feel more of an external magnetic field and it's the, the delta the delta E spin energy is going to be larger. And so that's why you see this peak right here is further down field because HA is going to be in the alpha state. Now HA can also be in the beta state, which is where the spin is in opposition to the external magnetic field. And when it's in opposition, the delta E spin energy right here is going to be smaller. That gap is smaller. That's why you see this peak upfilled with respect to this one. <clears throat> so in summary, the reason why we have splitting is because these protons behave as bar magnets and there are two forms, the alpha and the beta state. And those two forms, the alpha and the beta, are going to interact with HB slightly different. It's going to affect its chemical shift differently. So if we look at this one right here, a little bit more, this is going to be a triplet, right? So now here's our triplet signal. Now let's interpret why we have a triplet. Well, HB is going to be split by HA. There's two of them. Now HA in blue can be in the alpha state and HA in red can also be in the alpha state. That is being represented by these arrows right there. And then so that's the furthest downfield. And then HA and HB could both be in the beta state, which is going to be furthest upfield. But then this peak in the middle is looking at the combinations. Well, the blue proton can be alpha and the red can be beta, or the blue could be beta and the red could be alpha. So the reason why this peak is taller than the two peaks on the so outside is because there is a higher probability of having those two combinations. So it just increases the amount of those combinations. So if we keep going, let's look at a, a quartet. So we are looking at the splitting pattern of HB. You see what's happening here? The blue, the red, and the black could be all in the alpha state, or they could all be in the beta state. And then they have these many combinations in the middle. So that is why we have a splitting pattern. And that also explains the relative heights of these peaks. 
so that's where we will end this video and if you have any questions please reach out i'll be more than happy to help